it's all in the red light. There it is. Yeah. All right. Well, let's call this regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order. It is Thursday, February 24th, 2022. Roll call. We'll start to my left, Mike Stein. Present. And Jason? Here. Paul? Here. I'm Nick Rico, and I'm here too. All right. Um, please remember to put your mics on when you want to speak. Thank you. Uh, superintendents, for, oh no, regular monthly meeting, I apologize. The minutes that Serena just expertly put together. I'll entertain a motion to approve them. So moved. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Any questions, corrections? Yes, Mike. I have one. Under others present on under roll call, yep. on the first page, I believe uh, Karen Shoup, that should be 193 Pine Point Road, not Black Point Road. Uh, oh, yes, you are correct. Thank you, Mike. Cool. Good catch. Any others? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. Um, FYI, I should have done this on the call to order. We have two excused absences with Ruth Summers and Ben McDougall and Joe Carroll, at least for now. So, um, superintendent's report, you're up. Okay. Um, Let's see, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of January is included in your packet. Our average F1 flow for the month was 1.4 million gallons a day. Our F1 quality was uh, well within our permitted limits. Uh, we averaged 97% uh, BOD removal and 99% TSS removal with average concentrations of 7 and 3 milligrams per liter. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of January is also included in your packet. Uh, those, uh, those numbers looked fine all across the board. <clears throat> we currently are under um, contract with our electricity provider until the 1st of December of this year. With that in mind, we went out to bid to see how costs would be coming in. The bids we received would have increased the district's cost by $90,000. Our current budget is $225,000. We did not accept any of these bids and we'll continue to monitor the market and go out to bid hopefully at a more favorable time this coming summer. A copy of the bids I did provide in the packet. We also just received notification that our polymer costs uh, for dewatering will increase by 17% effective immediately. And uh, this actually falls under what we had uh, anticipated in our budget this year. I had anticipated a 25% increase. So. We are good with that. Uh, we have lost uh, significant, significant value in our three investment accounts. I gave you copies of the account snapshots. Uh, I reached out to Key Bank and we'll be meeting with them next week, um, the week of the 28th, uh, to discuss uh, this and see if there's uh, some changes that we should be making. Uh, we have received all of the Enterococci testing equipment. Uh, went through training and are now running some tests in preparation of uh, starting the permit compliance testing, which uh, begins April 15th. And LDL 1911, which is an act to prohibit the contamination of clean solids, uh, clean soils with so-called forever chemicals. Uh, this legislation, if passed, will essentially ban the sale or, or application of Maine, in Maine of all biosolids and compost derived from biosolids, forcing the disposal of our sludge into landfill. Not only uh, does this impact the districts directly, but also compost from fish farms, seaweed processes, and the like. Uh, we as an organization um, have developed the following talking points to provide to prevent the passing of this act. Uh, the ban will not do things to address the unfortunate legacy situation on several farms, which were um, been uh, pretty much shut down as a result of PFAS contamination. Uh, Maine DEP has already imposed some of the strictest PFAS regulation in the world and the current requirements for screening today's land 
applied biosolids means that these products do not present any significant PFAS risk. No other state has moved to ban uh, the practice of land application. Maine would be the first. The legislation should let Maine DEP and the United States EPA continue their research and risk reduction methods measures without interference and maintain the state's current and very strict regulatory framework. And the legislation would require biosolids to be disposed in the landfill, thus taking up limited capacity needed for future generations. Uh, we continue to have mail issues at the plant, although it is getting better now that we're getting away from the, the holidays. And I have completed my jury duty. I had to only report one day. That is what I have. Questions for the superintendent? Go ahead, Jason. Not necessarily a question, but just a comment. I, I just uh, ran the quick numbers so that the IRS and the other people um, want to be sure I was right here with my half of my head, but you did mention a significant drop in our assets. I, I didn't see it that significant, I guess. It's a 1% it's a decrease um, given what's going on in the markets. That, uh, that's fair. Yeah. So um, I, it, I just didn't want to people. 1% decrease. they are huh? making horrible <laughs> financial decisions. I don't know that that's the I case. Appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Just... Yeah, I think, uh, you know, certainly worth taking a look at and talking to our... Yep. They're, you know, they're being uh, very attentive to, uh, to us, so they're coming right in. I did have one other thing I did want to mention. I, I wrote it on the wrong page. Yep. Um, uh, we have replaced... Uh, uh, we're replacing three generators this year, and we've uh, pulled one of them out. And I just wanted to say that we sold it on a um, recently sold it on a bid site for equipment called Bid on Equipment, and we were able to get seventy five hundred dollars for it. So, that's it. Good. Uh, welcome, Joe, to the dais. No. Thanks, Joe, for coming. Appreciate it. Um, any other questions for the superintendent? All right, moving on, correspondence. Let's see, we, 465 Payne Road, uh, an ability to serve letter was provided for the proposed retail development to be, to be located at 465 Payne Road in Scarborough on behalf of uh, Miser Investments. Uh, the proposed project consists of one 5,130 square foot building um, and two commercial storefronts uh, and a drive through Starbucks coffee shop. The de development will, will be located within the northern por portion of the existing parking lot associated with Martin's store. The estimated daily flow for that is 18, uh, 1,836 gallons per day. 35 Muzzy Road, uh, another ability to serve letter was provided for this proposed 135 uh, residential units, uh, apartments. Uh, the requested flow is for 27,000 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste based on our standards. Higgins Beach Pump Station Evaluation. I provided a copy of the uh, this uh, pump station evaluation. Uh, this station is targeted for an upgrade within the next uh, two or three years. In preparation of this upgrade, we wanted to evaluate uh, two alternatives. One was to install new three-phase submersible pumps uh, within the existing wet well. And the second was to install new submersible pumps, install a, a new submersible pump station within the existing wet well and construct an intermediate pump station on Ocean Ave. The reason why for alternative two was to eliminate the cost of extending three-phase power down to uh, the existing pump station. Uh, and also uh, would uh, reduce the pump size located in that, in that uh, the existing pump station. Upon review, three-phase power would be needed uh, for both alternatives, which would uh, made the second alternative cost prohibitive. So as we move forward with this project, we'll move forward with alternative one as recommended by the study and just uh, continue down that path. Um, again, this isn't something that's going to take place for a couple, couple of years at least. And finally, an email was sent to the board as a follow-up to the last meeting, during which a reference was made about the ODA complaints that were logged at dispatch um, in relation to Pine Point Road. Consequently, uh, we followed up on, 
with dispatch to review all the call logs regarding odors in that area. As summarized in the email memo, there were five log complaints in five years, four in 2017 and one in 2021. And that's all I have with regard to correspondence. Any questions about the correspondence? Go ahead, Mike. I have one question. So this 35 Mussey Road, where is it? Is that the property like that's right across from that St. Joe Cafe yeah. and Eight Corners Pizza? Yes. Yeah. Okay, because what made me think that was when they mentioned that that there's a um, the the uh, sewer easement bi bisected that property. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that property went on the. There's also a river there. I didn't realize it's the Nonsuch River. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a big parcel. Did you say yes. it was 52 acres? That, that sounds right when we were talking. I remember looking at it. Go ahead, Paul. Um, great job on the uh, Higgins Beach uh, pump station evaluation. Really, really uh, just a question I think I already know the answer to, but I just wanted to confirm. So obviously it's a big investment, but, you know, we have a suction lift station and a floodplain, and so converting to submersible is obviously going to provide some resiliency, you know, for future and, and for flooding and that. So just wanted to make sure we were going to be installing the electrical, you know, resilient as, above, as we could, you know, as high as we could or, you know, to accommodate the, that uh, as well. The, yeah. No, yeah. We have to meet those requirements by yeah. uh, um, town ordinances anyway. So that, that is something that we would be doing. And just for a uh, point of Clarification: That station actually isn't a suction lift. It's a, um, it's a tin can, you know, style with pumps down below grade. Oh, the pumps are down. Okay. Yeah. okay. I yeah. for some reason yeah. I thought they were. Not that station. Okay. Gotcha. Very good. Thanks. Cool. One other. Go ahead, question Jason. Before you do, I, I'm trying to remember the timeline regarding the my front road order complaints before we install the new equipment. Am I just Am I reading this right? And then we had a total of five older people complaints since 2017, four of which were prior, were in 2017. Yeah. Was that about the time? That was about the time, time frame that uh, we were finishing up and starting up some of the equipment. We had some troubleshooting problems and startup issues. And okay. that, 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 from what I've read, several of these weren't even reported to the district. Exactly. Right? So I guess no, I had a follow up with that. Um, so since we've done, I think it was permanganate, per right? Pardon? Frank, we did the uh, the new permanganate. Per 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 yeah. yeah. Um, this is the only complaint we've had since. We've had one complaint in this year. Uh, well, last year, um, and um, you know, we've. We've got, we've got multi, we have a multifaceted odor control approach. Yeah. During the summer, we were able to um, inject oxygen into the, the force main through a, what's called the, um, a species cone. And it, we utilize liquid oxygen. We can't do that during the winter months because it, it freezes up. So that's taken offline as soon as the winter hits. But then we also chemically pig the force main with caustic on a regular basis. We have potassium permanganate tablets in the, um, the gravity line to scrub any additional odors. Uh, and then down further on down at the uh, pump station tour at Eastern Trail area, at that pump station, we have a Vapex ozone unit for scrubbing any odors that are released in the, in at the wet well, and then at, at the, um, oh, I forget now, the intersection where the drop manhole is. Primrose. Primrose, thank you. And at Primrose, there's a, what's called the drop manhole. There's a lot of, consequently, there's a lot of agitation and release of gases there. We have what's called an uh, inline check valve in the gravity sewer there to stop the, those gases from migrating up the line and impacting things else. So, yeah. So, yeah. My only follow-up with that, that was um, since those things have been implemented, 
is like really our first complaint. Correct. I mean, before we heard very vastly about the residents. And, and rightly so. I mean, it, yeah. was, it was a very, very uh, odorous area that needed to be addressed, and we took care of it. You know, we'll continue to, you know, we, we continue to monitor it with the, uh, the odor, odor loggers uh, in, um, in the manhole. You know, periodically we'll see a small hit of hydrogen sulfide in the, in the uh, gravity sewers. But it's, it's uh, summertime, it's, you know, um, it's, really, it's usually just uh, zero. That was my only question. I, I thought it was a marked improvement from the measures we made. I just didn't know if uh, anything else had changed in our operation. No, all that all that is still going on. The uh, the pump station design that ongoing right now for replacement in pump station one down at Snow's Canning, where the piece cone is located, uh, is. To incorporate is going to incorporate the space cone inside the building, so we can run that year round. Thank you. And we know of no other industrial type businesses going in in those areas that might influence the system. Uh, no, that in the old ready seafood that was there that really uh, ex exacerbated the odors. Um, the, they had moved out, and that property was vacant. Um, a company called Fam Family Seafood moved into it, but they actually moved across the street from Snow's Canning property into, ready, into the Ready Seafood property. They, they just relocated. So they were always discharging. They were always to discharging that, during the that. Area. In the majority of the, I think that. I think they were the last holdout in Snow's Canning for fish processing. I think it's now all uh, um, uh, marijuana, yeah, mar marijuana growing facilities now. Yeah. I just want to point out that the district spent a lot of time, effort, and resources to tamp down the odors there. The speech cone is not a cheap piece of equipment. The Vapex units aren't ex cheap either, you know, I, I would guess probably over $150,000 on odor control down there in that. Oh, you know, more. 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 All right. <laughs> so, you know, we've done our best to try to tamp down odors. And as I tell anyone who asks, we will never get rid of odors in the business we're in. We just can't do it just by the nature of what we do. We will do the best we can to keep and minimize those orders down. Um, anyway, that's all I'll say for that subject. Any other comments, questions? Okie dokie. Old business, we have none. New business. Um, Maine Municipal Supplemental Life and Dependent Life Insurance Benefits. Uh, I have attached copies of... Uh, both of these plans, uh, and they're offered through uh, Maine Municipal Employee Health Trust. Uh, these are plans, uh, uh, benefit plans that are off that they offer, uh, that the district could offer to staff at no cost to the district. These would be, um, if any of the staff cho chose to uh, select either of the plans, it would be through a payroll deduction directly paid out of their, their, their salary. So um, if you the pleasure of the board, I would like, I'd recommend the uh, district adopt these two plans as outlined in the attached documents. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the plans. Presiding. Thank you, Paul. Second. Thank you, Mike. Uh, questions? Go ahead. David, I might have missed it uh, at the last meeting, but uh, we're any closer to looking at that overall package. Yep. I, I'm working with the uh, um, our human resource consultant, uh, Betsy, Betsy Willow. Olten. 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 Um, 
me and she's going to be pulling that together and making a presentation to the board. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Paul. Um, so just uh, wanted to get some clarification on administration of the plan. So the costs would be borne by the employee if they choose to do it. Are there administrative costs we would have to take on or is it? Is it no. Yeah, okay. No. Very good, thanks. Barring no other questions, comments? All in favor? None opposed. Thank you, folks. Budget summary. One month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Joe. Any questions on the month of January budget? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. Public comments. Trustee comments. Paul. Um, I just wanted to give a kudos to, um, to the staff and to Dave for um, being proactive on the, uh, on, on the, the procurement of power, uh, sometimes uh, minimizing the, the increase is, is the best we can do and definitely appreciate you beating the, you know, hitting the pavement early on this one. So thanks for that. There's a bit of a uh, price sticker shock on that, but and hopefully we will get better bids come summertime. Yep. Keep, keep pounding the pavement. Thank you. Jason. Uh, just a quick comment. wanted to throw out my thanks to all the staff, but uh, specifically Serena and Wendy. I know they've been dealing with the, the audit, <laughs> which is always fun time. So thank you for all that you do. And uh, I'm sure, as usual, the audit will be successful, and uh, we'll hear about it soon enough. Thank you. Thank you. No. Uh, no, I echo the, my previous comments from my fellow trustees. Uh, thanks for the diligence with the uh, power study. Um, and I, know, I look forward to the audit as usual um, and the staff as they're doing. And, and our diligence in keeping up with the uh, order complaints at a point, Pine Point. Uh, I know it's an ongoing thing. I know we've invested a lot, a lot in there. And I think it's important for our, our, our users to understand that. So uh, thank you for uh, keeping up with that. Cool. Mike? I uh, just want to say it looks like it was uh, another successful month. Um, and kudos to Dave and, and the staff uh, for everything, for putting these packages together for every trustees meeting in that um, and um, nice job thank you thank you cool. I'll echo my fellow trustee comments and I'll just tell everyone to drive safe tomorrow or stay home or not yeah <laughs> better, better off that way I'll entertain the final motion motion to adjourn thank you Jason Second from Paul. All in favor? None opposed. We're done. Thank you.